G'day guys, here we are, the end of the brew day, well, the beer. This is my low ABV version of Phil's Wish, and it's a murky beer. So, what have I learned from brewing my first low ABV version of a beer? Let's dive in. did a video about brewing a low or no ABV beer over on Beer Co's channel um, about a month ago. I'll put a link, I'll put a card up there or in the description down below. Um, it was talking about some different methods uh, that you can use at home using different types of yeast and different brewing methods. Uh, I won't go over too much about the options if you're interested, check it out uh, in the link above. Um, but what I did, and I followed the instructions uh, set out by Lullamond in their brewing a low fermentable wort using high mash temperatures. So a couple of things I did differently on this uh, beer. <clears throat> I mashed really high, 84 degrees was my mash in temp. That basically means that none of the enzymes, you're basically mashing out straight away. And so your fermentability of the wort is low um, because the enzymes don't convert the starches to sugars, which are fermentable by the yeast. So that seemed to be going okay. I did a, an iodine test, which initially I was uh, a bit surprised to find that there was still starch present, but then I thought about it a little bit more, and of course that made sense because I deliberately killed the enzymes, so I think that's partly why it's so murky. I also didn't use a Werflock tablet, which could be the reason why as well. Um, I did a few other things with the water. Let's talk about the flavor first. So, cheers. It's been the keg uh, a bit over a week now, so it's still a little green. I'm getting nice aroma. It's not huge aroma, not as big as I was expecting. I do suspect there was, I did one thing. I was taking a sample I think, and I did one thing and there was a tiny little bit of oxygen that went in, so there could be a slight oxidized character. Anyway, so I'm getting Simcoe on the nose and what else is in here? There's um, Citra and Amarillo, so just a light citrus, but I am getting a slight sherry note coming through. Damn oxidation. Um, yeah, anyway. It do, the beer doesn't taste like a beer though, it tastes quite raw grain. If you've ever sort of dug your hand into the, the grain bed and eaten some of the grain after you mash it, so it doesn't have any of the sweetness there, but it's sort of that husk material almost. It's still drinkable. I had a homebrew club over here on the weekend and a lot of positive comments about the beer. It does finish on the bitter side. Um, I was targeting the same uh, bittering unit to gravity unit ratio as the 6% version is. However, at the last minute I changed it. I wish I kind of didn't, I'll, I'll tell you why. So some of the other things that I did to try and combat this beer uh, being so low in ABV. Usually low ABV beers have a really thin mouthfeel um, and the alcohol gives some of that body. So I wanted to try and trick, um, not trick, but influence a, an impression of a fuller mouthfeel. So I targeted a Nipah um, water profile. So uh, I might put the numbers up on the screen if anyone's interested. Uh, and I also targeted a high mash uh, mash in pH because I've read in this book um, that a couple of breweries are having good success with their session beers trying to get uh, a bit more hop flavor and aroma into their um, uh, session beers by mashing around 5.5 to 5.7 because you're not really worried about conversion of starches anyway which is the whole reason why you're often down in that lower pH range 
uh, for your mash. I also tried to combat oxidation um, by putting in some mash hops, just I had 10 grams cascade in there just hanging around. Um, so I think that that worked well. Uh, and I think th the slight oxidation character that I'm getting is more to do with that not purging uh, a transfer line when I uh, re-pressurized the, uh, the keg after taking a sample. What else I do? Um, yeah, so I mentioned that I was targeting the same BU to GU ratio. Um, I was going to do that. I had, and then I had a little brain fart, or well, not brain fart, but an idea that, hang on a minute, so I'm gonna finish on the high end of the scale in terms of my final gravity is 1016. So my, I, I ended up hitting a, an original gravity of 1042, fermented down to 1016 which is a little bit further than I wanted to. This was meant to be a 0.7% beer, turned into a 1.1% beer. Um, and in my head, I'm used to thinking about normal brewing, thinking about there might be a little bit more residual sweetness because I mashed high, didn't quite think about it all the way through. So I bumped the bittering a little bit more just to try and keep it balanced. But of course, I forgot that there's no real there's not going to be many fermentable sugars in here. It's not particularly sweet, so it does have a, a lingering bitterness um, there. But it's not too much. It's just, uh, it's a little bit uh, more uh, aggressively bitter than I would uh, like it to be balanced. So, a bit about the beer. Um, same grain bill as Phil's Wish, but just reduced amount. So we've only got a total of 2.66 kilos. Um, 2.5 kilos of Maris and 160 grams of light crystal. Um, got my mash hops, which is 10 grams of Cascade. And then nothing uh, for the whole boil. I only did a 30 minute boil just because I wanted to try and compress the brew day and I wasn't particularly worried about DMS. Um, I've done 30 minute boils in the past and not had a problem with it. So then I uh, chilled to 88 degrees and added uh, a total of 80 grams of dry hops, which are Citra, Simcoe, and Amarillo. Um, and then I dry hopped it. Oh yes, that was the other thing. Uh, I usually like to dry hop in the last five or six points of fermentation, but of course I was only expecting five or six points of fermentation. So I wasn't sure about the best way to do it. I made the decision on the day to put the dry hops into the fermenter rack the beer on top of the hops and so I was pitching uh, the yeast at the same time as uh, as dry hopping and I it fermented down more than I was expecting so my estimated final gravity was 1020 and I actually ended up with 1016 so it's four extra points um, of fermentation so I think there was a little bit of dry hop creep um, so for those who don't know what dry hop creep is, um, some uh, hops can, can uh, contain some of the enzymes which convert the longer chain sugars into uh, more fermentable short chain sugars. And as I was ha having a wort that was quite non-fermentable and I was using the Lallemann Windsor yeast, which is a maltotriose negative yeast, I think the hops might have been doing some chemical manipulation and making those, that work a little bit more fermentable um, than I was hoping for. So if I did this again, I'd probably do the full fermentation um, without dry hopping. I'd crash, do a soft crash chill to maybe 12 degrees or, or even 4 degrees and then dry hop, purge with CO2 um, and let it dry hop for a couple of days. Uh, without that active yeast fermentation. That might also uh, decrease the amount of haze in the beer as well. So, anyway, for a first, for a first attempt at a, um, a low ABV version of an IPA, it's definitely got the aroma of an IPA. It's not, it doesn't, it's not thin um, like I was uh, worried about. It does have a lingering bitterness, which has faded a little bit. There was definitely some, some hot burn going on in, in the early um, time it was in the keg, but 
there is like a, a lasting bitterness on the tongue because especially when there's it's not particularly sweet you don't get any of the malt sweetness that you would normally get in an american style ipa but it's a little bit fruity on the tongue a little bit citrusy on the tongue when you taste it finishes it, it's not bad for a first attempt I'm, I'm relatively happy with it but there's definitely a lot of lessons learned um, so yeah, uh, I know that I've had a lot of interest in this beer. Uh, a lot of people messaging me saying they're looking forward to seeing how it goes. I'd say it's a, it's a pretty good go um, for, a, for a shoot at the hit first attempt. So anyway, I'm, I'm gonna go on that note and yeah, because it's only 1% alcohol, I'm feeling good. So uh, I'll see you guys uh, in the next video. So. Uh, until then, this has been Stas from Stas Brewing. Like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.